Hi there, I'm Jonathan and welcome to Brain Stuff. Now, if you're like me, you grew up being taught that taking your vitamins was an important part of a balanced, healthy life. The alternative is to eat exactly the right amount of foods to supply your body with the recommended daily value of nutrients. And who wants to do all that work when you can just swallow a pill? Or even better, chew on a block of sugar shaped like your favorite cartoon character. But are supplemental vitamins actually helpful? Does a vitamin a day truly keep you healthy to play? Well, first, let's get a simple understanding of how vitamins work. They're really just small molecules that our bodies need to carry out certain reactions. Unfortunately, our bodies don't make vitamins themselves, so we need to eat food that contains these important molecules. 60 years ago, the first multivitamin became available on the American market. Basically, this is a pill that contains at least 10 vitamins and 10 minerals to supplement our diet. Now, millions of adults and children devour these pills every day, spending $12 billion a year on them. If you don't have the time to gather fresh fruit, vegetables, and grains every day, then you're probably taking a multivitamin. But several recent studies have shown that there are some negative effects to be aware of when taking multivitamins. For instance, less than half the multivitamins sold in the United States and Canada actually contain what their labels say. Sometimes they'll have too much of a supplement, like a children's vitamin that had 216% the amount of vitamin A listed. Now that, my friends, are just the multivitamins that are mislabeled. Some experts believe that we don't always gain benefits from vitamins unless they are absorbed into our body along with the other compounds found in their natural form. So maybe vitamin C doesn't really work unless you digest it with an orange. Also, supplement research is really difficult to gauge because each of us eats an incredibly broad variety of foods that could either help or hinder the absorption of vitamins. Not to mention that the Food and Drug Administration doesn't require these supplements to go through the same scrutiny for safety and efficacy that it does for, say, medicine or drugs. The more we look into it, the more it seems that multivitamins have no substantial health benefits or their benefits are too small to make much of a difference. Let's look at a few examples of how this plays out, starting with folic acid. This is one of those supplements originally thought to protect the heart and prevent cancer. Now, based on a 2008 study out of Harvard, it turns out that too much folic acid may instead promote prostate and colorectal cancer. And because food companies add it to grain products, most of us already are getting our daily values worth. But, but what about vitamin C? You know, the one we're supposed to take when we get sick? Well, if you eat foods that are rich in vitamin C, it can lower your risk of heart disease and cancer. But if you simply take it in pill form, it seems to have no benefits. Another vitamin that supposedly prevented heart disease and cancer is vitamin E. But again, that's only in its natural form in nuts, seeds, and vegetable oils, where it can also strengthen the immune system. As a supplement, there's no evidence that vitamin E provides any of its natural benefits. Vitamin A, hey, it's, it's very similar in that it doesn't actually prevent lung cancer as it's advertised. In fact, large doses actually increase the risk of lung cancer in smokers. Now, most of us are already getting plenty of vitamin A anyway in eggs, whole milk, dark leafy veggies, and orange or yellow fruits. B vitamins were originally thought to help people with Alzheimer's disease or even raise your energy levels. But the trial results have been disappointing with no real evidence that it does either. Uh, but B12 is one of the vitamins that can help supplement an unbalanced diet. It's good for strict vegetarians who aren't getting everything they need from animal derived food. But otherwise, you don't really need it unless you're pregnant or facing macular degeneration from old age. Finally, let's look at vitamin D. You know, the one we get from the sun? Mm -hmm. There's still hope that it can help with osteoporosis, but the data is inconclusive since everyone gets different amounts of sun exposure. If you're already getting a decent amount of midday sun exposure and regularly consume foods like fatty fish, eggs, and fortified dairy products, you probably don't need a D supplement. Perhaps in the future, with a little forward thinking, we'll be able to just pop a pill personally tailored to our nutrition. But as it stands today, your best bet is to still just eat a balanced diet. However, this doesn't mean you should run home and pour all your multivitamins down the toilet. Just do a little research on what your body needs and whether the pill you're taking is actually necessary. With so much evidence stacked against vitamin supplements, 
why do you think we still take them all the time? Let us know what you think in the comments below or head over to brainstuffshow.com to join the conversation. And please subscribe to our channel on YouTube. It would make me the happiest boy in the world. Twinkle.